Welcome to the Tech Valley Center of Gravity. You haven't just bought a membership. You've joined a community of people who are passionate about making. It's a diverse group. Artists, machinists, software developers, anyone that creates something out of nothing. As an organization, we're strongest when our members work efficiently and safely. We're going to cover some basics about how to interact with our community, with our building, and how to maintain a safe environment. Our code of conduct has five major tenets. Be excellent to each other. Don't set on fire what isn't supposed to be on fire. All members must maintain a safe and clean environment at all times. All members shall follow all posted notices. It is everyone's responsibility to follow the code of conduct. Being excellent to each other has been the guiding principle for modern makerspaces since they began appearing in the mid-2000s. Every action we take or policy we set comes back to this mantra. We couldn't have built this amazing community that we have without pursuing excellence in our relationships with one another. In the unfortunate event that someone violates this code of conduct or disregards any of our safety rules, they will be subject to disciplinary action. It could be a written warning, a temporary banishment from the building, or a permanent suspension of membership. If any member is acting in a way that interferes with your safety or ability to use the space, please contact a member of COG staff immediately. The COG is a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Any income we make goes back into our community and supports our mission. The organization is led by a board of directors elected by our members. Our existence is guided by our bylaws. The executive director runs the day-to-day -day operations and reports to the board of directors. A small part-time paid staff takes care of administrative, bookkeeping, and equipment maintenance needs. Because the staff is part-time, it may take a while to return emails or phone calls, so please be patient. We rely on volunteers to help support the community by running programs, teaching classes, and providing tours to prospective members. The makerspace belongs to the members. Be sure to take some time to get familiar with the place. Poke through the zones, look up what the tools are for, open drawers, look in cabinets, at least the ones that aren't privately rented. Members also have a responsibility to keep this community growing and thriving. If you see an opportunity for improvement, let us know. If it's something small, like rearranging a workstation or building a tool storage rack, just go ahead and do it. If it doesn't work out, we'll just put things back to the way they were. This place is designed to be a living creature, constantly adapting to our members' changing needs. Volunteering at the COG takes many forms. Members can apply to serve as a volunteer ambassador after taking the required training class. Ambassadors give tours to the public, answer questions, and act as the primary point of contact and safety watch when staff isn't available. Zone coordinators give safety orientations, and help ensure that the needs of the members who use their zone are met. Occasionally, we will announce special projects or events that need some volunteer assistance. Members who volunteer their time may be eligible to receive credit towards their membership dues. Check the website for more information. We are located in the center of downtown Troy. Parking is a mix of street parking, city-owned permit lots and garages, and private garages. Street parking is a mix of pay-by-the-hour meters and two-hour free parking. Pay attention to the street signs. These parking rules are enforced Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. through 5 p.m. Street parking is free after 5 p.m. on weekdays and all day on weekends, unless signs say otherwise. The privately owned Uncle Sam Parking Garage and the city-owned Fifth Avenue and State Street garages are restricted to permit holders between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. Outside of those times, they are free and open to the public. Free street parking can be found a short walk away in the area south of Ferry Street. All of these streets have a different four-hour window a week when parking is prohibited for street cleaning. Check the signs before you park. There are three bathrooms on the first floor and two bathrooms in the basement. The bathroom in the Thinkubator should be reserved for families and children whenever they are present, since it is designed for kids and it is the only one with a changing table. It's the only bathroom within the COG's rented space. 
all other bathrooms are shared with the rest of the building. The first floor bathrooms are located just beyond the rear double doors. There is a fob reader to get back in, and keys are provided for guests without a fob. The basement bathrooms are located beyond the rear double doors and around the corner. These doors do not have a fob reader or keys for re-entry. If you must unlock the door for re-entry, please remember to lock it when returning. Leaving any exterior door unlocked is grounds for termination of membership, since compromising the security of our members is definitely not being excellent to them. The kitchen is our primary social gathering spot, and it's equipped for most cooking needs. If you want to make your dinner here, go for it. Our members love to share food, so keep an eye on the counter for free surprises. If you leave anything in the refrigerator, label it with your name and the date. Any unlabeled items are up for grabs. All dirty dishes must be placed in the dishwasher. Please do not leave them sitting in the sink. If you find the dishwasher to be full of dirty dishes, place a soap pod in it and set it to run. If it is finished running, put everything away. It won't take more than five minutes. The building janitors will only empty the garbages. They are not responsible for cleaning the kitchen. That chore falls on all of us, so please do your part. To deter mice, any food placed in the cabinets must be stored in hard plastic containers. The space is divided into several different zones containing different types of equipment. They are led by volunteer zone coordinators who are responsible for making sure that the zone reflects the needs of the membership. If there are any problems or questions about a zone, the zone coordinator is your first point of contact. Their email address is listed on the website and posted in the zone. Every zone, with the exception of electronics and the kitchen, requires completion of a zone safety orientation before using any equipment within that zone. For each zone you'd like to use, sign up for the next safety orientation on the website. The instructor won't show up for an orientation unless someone is signed up for it, so please register as much in advance as possible. Building stuff takes up space. There are open workbenches and work areas throughout the building that are shared by all members. Materials and projects can be temporarily stored in these spaces for up to one week. They must be labeled with a parking pass and be removed before one week has elapsed. Otherwise, they may be discarded or we may charge you rental fees. If you need space for longer than a week, we have several space rental options available, from bins to lockers to floor space. Ask a COG employee for more information about how to rent space. Members can use our address as their business address or as a safe place to ship materials. 30 3rd Street, Troy, New York, 12180. Incoming mail will be left near the front desk or near the mailboxes. However, as much as we try to protect the mail of our members, we cannot guarantee its safety. Please pick it up as soon as possible. Members without active memberships will have their mail returned to the sender. If you'd like a mailbox cubby, talk to our staff to request one. Our giant windows and cool toys attract a lot of attention. As a result, we get many people ringing our doorbell looking to learn more about us. COG employees and volunteers will answer the door if they are around. Members can answer the door, but must follow a few guidelines. If you are in the middle of working, or don't feel comfortable answering the door, you are absolutely under no obligation to do so. The doorbell ringers can contact us through the email address and phone number that are posted on our front door. If you do answer the door, always ask, how may I help you? The answer to this question will always determine what to do next. If a member forgot their FOB or their FOB isn't working, make sure to remind them to sign in and email us to fix the problem. If they are non-members who want more information, direct them to the available flyers or answer to the best of your knowledge. Tours should only be given by those who have gone through our volunteer training or are very familiar with the space. Be sure to let people know about our Tuesday evening social nights where they can get a tour and mingle with our other members. Frequently, people are looking for an office upstairs. Please direct them to exit the building and re-enter through the entrance on Broadway where they can access the upstairs offices. Consumables are available throughout the COG, from 3D printer filament to wood glue to cutting fluid. Anyone is welcome to use what's available. The COG will provide these items when funds are available, 
but frequently they are donated by members. If you find that you are using a large quantity of something, please replenish whatever consumables you've used. Your fellow members will really appreciate it. Every member at all times is required to maintain a safe and clean environment. We're going to go over a bunch of general safety rules that apply at all times when in the COG. These are posted on our website. Each zone will have specific safety rules pertaining to their equipment, and these will be covered in the zone orientations. Please also follow any posted signs. The COG is a dynamic environment, and signage is used to communicate important safety information to members. This community takes cleanliness very seriously. There is nothing more frustrating than showing up ready to work on a project and having to clean up someone else's mess or not being able to find the tool that you need. Vacuums, dustpans, spray cleaners, and paper towels are available throughout the space. Before you leave, set aside at least 15 minutes to dedicate to cleaning up and putting all tools back where they belong. Shared spaces, by nature, tend towards messiness over time. Even if you think you've cleaned up after yourself fully, there's bound to be a misplaced tool or some dust or debris that has escaped your watchful eye. The only way to counteract this is if everyone cleans up a little bit more than their own mess. If there are any liquid spills, please clean those up immediately to prevent slipping hazards. Our tools are separated into three safety classifications, green, yellow, and red. Green tools have very low risk of injury associated with their use. Common hand tools and things typically found in a household are considered green tools. If something is not labeled with a safety color, it is by default a green tool. Yellow tools, if used improperly, may cause the user serious injury. Red tools, if improperly used, will cause serious injury, bodily dismemberment, or death. Before using a yellow or red tool, you must complete the appropriate zone safety orientation. Only use equipment when you are confident and knowledgeable in how to operate it. If you don't know how to use something, do some research. Ask another member or a zone coordinator for assistance, or sign up for one of our in-depth classes. You can only use red tools if there is another person in the building. This person would call 911 in the event you sustain an injury and become incapacitated while using the tool. You can bring in a non-member guest to serve as this safety watch purpose. If you are working into the late hours, check the building frequently since there's a chance all other members may have left while you were in the middle of doing your work. Make sure your outfit is compatible with the work you will be doing. Long hair, loose clothing, jewelry, and hoodie strings are prohibited when using equipment with rotating or moving parts. Fully enclosed footwear shall be worn when in the wood and metal zones. When welding, or doing any metal work that involves sparks or hot flying metal chips, ensure your footwear is free of mesh that can easily be burned through. Cotton clothing is preferred, since anything polyester can melt onto your skin and cause serious burns. Don't power through the moving of heavy objects. Work smarter, not harder. Use dollies, carts, or ask others for help. Otherwise, muscle sprains will prevent you from picking up anything at all. Your mind should be completely focused on the task at hand. To do so, it can't be impaired by alcohol or other drugs. Your work area should also be free of distractions. Conversations with others shouldn't be held while a machine is on. Check your work area to confirm you have ample space and you won't be bumping into or tripping over other things. And while you are cutting, grinding, or sanding away, keep in mind that friction causes heat. Materials, especially metals, can get hot enough to cause serious burns. If a machine isn't working properly, it should be locked out to prevent other people from using it. Otherwise, they might get hurt or damage the machine even further. Lockout, tagout materials and instructions are located in the basement. Unplug the machine and place the plug in the yellow canister. Fill out the information tag with your name and the problem. Run the lock through the hole on the tag and in the canister. Send the zone coordinator an email explaining the problem. Only authorized personnel have the ability to unlock equipment. 
never tamper with or attempt to use a machine that's been locked out. Personal protective equipment must be worn to protect against the risks of your work. Safety glasses shall be worn at all times when you are in the wood, welding, and metal zones. Even if you are not using any power tools, someone else may accidentally launch a projectile. Chips and broken tools can move fast and travel far. Your eyes are difficult to repair and impossible to replace. Gloves should be worn when handling sharp objects, especially sheet metal. However, gloves must be removed when using equipment with rotating and moving parts. Gloves can very easily get caught and drag your body into the machine faster than you can turn it off. If you're dealing with cutting fluid on a machine, you can wear thin vinyl gloves since they will tear very easily if they get caught. You won't notice it, but your hearing can be damaged if it's repeatedly exposed to short, loud noises. Wear earplugs or earmuffs when doing anything noisy. The basement tends to get noisy if two or more people are working at the same time. Airborne sawdust won't just make you sneeze, it can also cause lung damage. Our dust collection system helps keep the mess down, but it can't capture everything, especially when sanding. Dust masks, either disposable or washable, should be worn whenever generating sawdust. Many paints, chemicals, and aggressive cleaners put off vapors that cause brain damage. The building does not have any fume hoods or other methods to remove these harmful vapors. So, if a chemical's label says, good ventilation required for use, it cannot be used in the building. However, small amounts that dissipate quickly are okay. For example, using mineral spirits to clean a small spot, or touching up small areas of paint or stain. Use your best judgment. If the odor is going to linger or travel to other rooms, you should do that work somewhere else. Spray paint shall never be used at any time in the building. Handheld power tools require just as much respect as stationary ones, since they move at similar speeds. Inspect the tool for damage before use, especially the power cords, since they can easily get damaged. They shouldn't be cut, frayed, and should have a ground prong. Always ensure your material is properly secured before drilling, cutting, or sanding. Never hold materials in your hand. Power drills can easily catch on a burr and send it spinning, and saw blades can jam up and kick back. While you're at it, make sure the bits and blades are installed properly. Don't remove any safety shields, since the manufacturer put them there for a reason. The amount of pressure behind compressed air can do some serious damage. Air tanks are pressurized to about 90 psi, and it takes as little as 4 psi to cause injury. Metal chips, oil, and wood splinters can be impregnated into the skin, and if it doesn't cause immediate pain, they may cause health problems later in life. To prevent this, never direct compressed air at any body part, and never use it to clean off your clothes. If you're cleaning off a part, keep in mind the air can blow debris back at you, so be sure you are wearing safety glasses, a face mask, and sufficient protective clothing. Any damaged hoses or fittings could potentially explode when under pressure, so be sure to check everything over before use. All chemicals have a safety data sheet written by the manufacturer. The SDS details what about the material is hazardous, required PPE, first aid actions, and fire response. Any hazardous materials brought into the COG must be approved by us first, and we must keep an up-to-date SDS on file. We don't have any fume hoods or work areas dedicated to working with chemicals, so we are limited in what can be used here. Things like machining coolant, isopropyl alcohol, and household cleaners are the most common chemicals you will find here. Please ask a staff member before bringing something else in. What would you do if you came across an unconscious person lying on the ground? Or if someone got a serious cut on their arm? Spending some time thinking about how you would respond to an accident greatly improves your reaction time. First, determine whether or not 911 needs to be called. If so, do it right away. If others are around, assign someone to stand outside the front door to direct emergency personnel to the injury. Do your best to stabilize the injury. Put pressure on bleeding or prevent the person from moving. First aid kits are located throughout the building, and they have instructions for caring for typical injuries. The Red Cross has an excellent first aid app, which we highly recommend downloading. Report all injuries, minor and serious, 
to info at tvcog.net. By keeping track of all injuries, we can figure out ways to mitigate them in the future. If you encounter another person's bodily fluids, do not attempt to clean them up yourself, unless you've been specifically trained to do so and have the proper PPE. Contact with someone else's bodily fluids could result in contracting a number of deadly diseases. If you do inadvertently make contact, be sure to seek medical attention immediately. Between laser cutting, welding, kilns, hot soldering irons, and flammable cleaners, there are plenty of opportunities for a fire to start if equipment is used improperly. Even small fires can get out of hand very quickly. Know the location of fire alarm poles, and don't be afraid to set off the alarm if you have any hesitation about being able to put the fire out with a fire extinguisher. It is very important to take into account what is burning because that will determine how to fight the fire and if you should immediately call for help. We have a mix of Class A and Class ABC fire extinguishers in the space. Class A fires involve ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, plastics, and can be put out with just water. Most laser cutter fires are Class A. Class B fires involve flammable liquids such as gas, oil, grease, and paint. Never spray water onto these fires. That will make it worse. For Class C, electrical fires, and Class D, metal fires, you're better off letting the professionals handle it. To use a fire extinguisher, remember the acronym PASS. Pull, aim, squeeze, sweep. Pull the pin from the handle, aim the nozzle at the base of the fire, squeeze the handle, and sweep the entire width of the fire. Keep going until the extinguisher is completely empty. Membership dues don't just get you access to a building with tools. It also gives you access to a community of creative makers. Keeping this community strong and safe requires participation. Let someone know if they are performing an unsafe action. Share your ideas if you have a better way of doing something. Please, Ask questions if you have any hesitation about anything you are trying to do. Your fellow members are always willing to provide feedback and assistance whenever they can. We're all here to learn, expand our knowledge, and stay safe while doing it. You can contact our staff and volunteer zone coordinators via the email addresses on our website, and you can interact with the rest of the community through the zone whiteboards or through the various social media platforms. Welcome to the COG. What will you make?